I'm Yvette Stanton. Welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number three. Today I'm not wearing a piece of embroidered clothing like I said I would because the piece of embroidery that I'm going to wear, I'm actually going to show you how to finish it as this video. So the piece of embroidery I'm talking about is the espresso pendant from my book Smoig Pattern Darning from Norway and I'm going to show you how to mount the embroidery into the pendant tray. The pendant trays we sell as part of a kit which comes with the tray, the chain, the acid free mounting board and the acid free adhesive. So it's got everything you need in it except your embroidery to mount. So let's go ahead and we'll show you how to do it. Okay so what we are going to do today is to mount this embroidery into a pendant. Um, this is the pendant tray that we will be using. You can see that it's made of metal. Um, in the base of it here is a uh, double sided adhesive. It's a really really strong and sticky one. Once I take that orange covering off that will leave just the adhesive there and that's what we will stick it to. Using a double sided adhesive means you don't have to worry about finding the glue that will glue fabric to metal and it also won't have any strings going anywhere. We also have the piece of cardboard, it's about a 600 GSM piece of cardboard and that gets put into here, the embroidery mounted over it. You can see that I've cut it at about a millimetre smaller than the size of the tray so that once the fabric is stretched around it, it will still fit. This is our embroidery here. I just need to lay this over to see how much bigger the um, the card is than the embroidery. So we can see that it's a little bit bigger. So what I need to do is make an allowance for that when I cut out my embroidery. Um, I'll just get my scissors. Okay, so we need to cut, it's, it, the, the backing board will come to about there. So we need it to be about a centimeter out from there. So I'm going to cut to there, about there, all the way around. It doesn't need to be particularly exact. I'm not having very much luck with this anyway. No, not the right scissors to use, I think. Anyway, I will persist. Okay, make a small snip and then keep going. Right. It's better to cut it slightly too big and then chop it back rather than cutting it too small to start with and not having enough to work with. I'd rather have too much than too little. And as you can see, I'm not being terribly exact. If I was doing this a bit sl more slowly, I probably would cut along the grain. Okay, and then we place this over the back. The idea is that we will fold that in like that and lace those two sides and then we will fold them in to the sides and lace them between. Now I can see that that's actually too wide, it doesn't give me any space to lace so I'm going to need to trim a little bit off the sides. Now I have um, a needle that's threaded with a double thickness thread and I'm going to put a knot in the ends of them. And then I'm going to place this at the back of the embroidery. Okay, so I'm going to fold the end down and I'm going to take a stitch here. Now you'll probably start from the other side because you're right-handed and I'm left-handed, but some of you might be left-handed, so you can do it this way too. So I'm just going to take a couple of back stitches there. We do already have our knot, but I'd rather it be um, just that little bit more well-fastened with some back stitches as well. So that'll probably do. And then fold that side up. So one down and one up and then go 
underneath that flap there. Sorry, it's not behaving today, is it? And then across to the other side. Now I'm only doing this loosely at the moment. I will re-tighten it later. Um, you don't want to take your stitch too close to the edge because if you do it down here, all of those threads could pull away. If it's further away up here, it's going to be quite secure. So I'll just keep lacing like that. Okay, so I've done the lacing the whole way there. Um, what I need to do now is there are still a little bit loose and I don't want them to be loose. So I go right back to the beginning and I tighten it thread by thread. You want it to be tight but you don't want it to be so tight that the cardboard bows. You want it to stay flat. If, you, if, it, ha if it bows at all you only want it to do it the smallest amount. So tighten that one, put a finger on it. Tighten the next one along, put a finger on that. Tighten the next one, finger, thumb actually, and keep tightening. And you can see that that's a lot tighter than it was. And then I'll take a couple more back stitches just at the edge here to fasten that. Now if I had enough thread, I could continue with the same thread to do the other side's lacing, but I'm running out. So I'll trim that off and start a new one. So I have my new thread ready now to go, but before I do the next side, what I need to do is turn it over to the front and check that it's in the center. Now if I fold those sides back, we can see that that is awfully crooked and we don't want it like that. So we need to give it a bit of a tug in the right way so that it sorts itself out before we go any further. When you're doing this sort of thing, take your time get it right. There is no need to rush. You've spent all that time doing the embroidery, so don't rush the finishing. You want it to look good. So take your time, do it slowly, and make sure you get it right. So you can see I'm giving this quite a bit of manipulation to make it right. And I reckon that's going to be pretty good now. Okay, so I'm going to start again folding down that corner there. Now when you're folding these in, if you fold that so that it's like that, those edges can quite often stick out like that. And when you turn it over the front, you can see that. We don't want that to happen. So when we do it, I generally push that in a little bit at the side like that and then fold it in. So you get a slightly um, angled edge there. So again, I'm going to doesn't want to behave. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and take a couple of back stitches again. That should do. Now we'll just fold that so that it's on an angle again. and go to the opposite side. And lace across back and forth. And I generally go under the fold as well. I try not to catch in any of those threads in the previous layer of lacing. Okay, so I'll keep going with that and we'll come back shortly. Okay, if I fold these down, these are the ones at the other end, you can see how far that juts out like that, and that's because it's not sitting far enough in here. So what I need to do is push that right up into there and then fold that along as well, and you can see how much better that sits now. So you're just manipulating it a little bit so that it sits the way you want it to sit rather than the way it wants it to sit. So that's made a huge improvement there. You don't want to wait too close to the end to get that because you need to get it access into underneath to be able to fold them the way you want them. So I will keep going from side to side now that I've explained that and we'll be back again soon.
So I've finished lacing as you can see but I'm not going to finish off my thread just yet. I want to turn it over to the front once again and check that it looks alright. Now we can see that it's still quite wiggly. That's not straight down there against the edge and neither is that there. So it just requires a little bit of pushing around till it gets it to be right. So you want it to look the best it can look. So just keep pushing it until you've got it looking the way you want it. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, the other thing is we still need to tighten these threads off again as we did last time. So you can see how much extra I've already pulled out there. Quite a bit. Keep pulling. So I'm taking a lot of slack out of that thread and that's going to mean that it's stretched much better over the cardboard. Okay, so that's heaps better. And now I will finish that thread off with a couple of back stitches. And then when you take your thread to the end, what you don't want is for it to be... Stop doing that. Um, you don't want for that end to be sticking out where it comes up at the side. So what I generally do is just take a stitch back in this direction to run it underneath and then there's not going to be any chance that it will end up sitting out at the side. So I trim that off. Now, we still want to turn it over and check it one last time because you can still move it around now to make sure that it's okay. Yep, that's looking pretty good to me. Okay, so now we need to get that out of there. It can be difficult to, to do sometimes. So what makes it a little bit easier is to have your needle and just prise the orange layer up there. Come on, lift. That's no, getting both layers. I'll press it back down again. I'll try to get just the orange layer. That's it. But I've got to grab it now. <laughs> okay, that's it. Pull it off. Okay, and then gently position that into the center and give it a really good strong press. And there we are. There's the finished Sorry, that was out of the thing. There's the finished pendant. We'll put it in the chain onto it and then it'll be ready to wear. So I'm now wearing my embroidered thing to wear. Um, it's a pendant. And as I was just finishing it off, I thought, why does it not go right to the ends? I thought the one in the book did go right to the ends. So I checked it and I made a boo-boo. You can see here that there's a whole star, a whole star, and a whole star, and it goes right to the ends of the pendant. This one, the whole star isn't finished at the top. So I thought that I'd finished the embroidery for this one, and I hadn't. Um, anyway, I have shown you how to do it. I didn't show you quite correctly in terms of the finished embroidery, but you can see the idea of how it's supposed to work. Next time I'll finish the embroidery before I mount it. We have kits available with the pendant tray, the pendant chain, the adhesive and the backing board. They're available on our website. We have them in the rectangular shape like I'm wearing today. We also have them in um, some circles and there's some squares as well. So you can find the link for them down below um, in just above the comments section. Um, I encourage you to go and have a look at them. Uh, the, the mounting board that I've used and the adhesive are both acid free so they won't damage your embroidery long term. Thanks very much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!